This is the rain gauge data set. Uh, it contains a whole lot of data about rainfall in various places. And what I'd like to show you is actually how to do some analysis of the data. I want to try and draw some diagrams like histograms and box plots. Uh, but before we can do that, there are some problems with doing this in Excel, which is the package I'm using at the moment, which is quite a common statistical package spreadsheet thing, but there are some problems with the graphs that I want to draw. Let me show you, uh, first of all, though, what this data set is about. It looks like I've got several locations, six of them up here. They're fairly unhelpfully named at the top. They've got all sorts of random bits of text up here. It looks like that's just come out of some statistical package which exported the data. It looks like I've got a load of dates run on for about six months. And on each date and in each location, it looks like I've got an amount of rainfall, which I think is in millimeters. So it's just telling me how much rain fell in each place on each day. Uh, look around at a data set, get to know it. If you scroll down, you can see immediately there are some possible potential problems in the future. There's some data not available in this. Uh, and you see roughly how much data it is. And maybe you notice that the date format might be something if you need to pay attention to if you maybe want to plot a time series. You have to figure out whether this date format is appropriate. I'm not needing to worry about that because the sort of diagrams I want to plot here are not to do with the actual dates. I want to collect all the data into a histogram. Before I do that, let's do a bit of cleaning up. I'm going to add a new row in here. I right-clicked on the row 2. If I click Insert, it inserts a whole row for me. And I'm just going to name these something a bit more sensible. This is actually from a place called Allerton Bywater. This is from Middleton. I'm just uh, removing all the sort of extra rubbish that's been sort of packaged in that title that's come out from the export. And I think this is a sensible thing to do for any data. It helps you get to know it and make sure you know what you're looking at and maybe I could just hide that top row. It's not going to delete it. Right click though, click on hide, and that just looks a little bit tidier. I think when I export this to somewhere else in a moment, it's going to be neater to see those titles as well. Before I go any further, say I wanted to do a histogram of the uh, the rainfall in Allerton Bywater, I could actually try and do that in Excel. It does turn out that Excel isn't very good at doing a histogram. Let me show you what happens. If you select this column, click on insert, go to the uh, the charts area, there's a little option here called a statistic chart, whatever that is, um, and if you click on it, there are some good mathematical options here. Unfortunately, if I hover over it, you can see it's not successfully creating a chart, it's just a blank chart down there. That's actually because there's some text in the selection. It's this box at the top which is ruining it which is a shame because it's quite a useful title to have you'd hope it could cope with that but it can't it does do a little better if you just select the numbers I'm going to select this column of numbers without the title to do that I'm going to uh, well I'll show you the, the keys I'm pressing I'm going to just uh, click on the top one hold down shift and control um, hold down shift and control and if I use the arrow keys now it's going to jump to big sections of text while selecting if I press down has jumped to the end of that data set straight away and it's all selected. That's a very useful shortcut. You could obviously just drag and select as well. If I now try and draw a histogram, you can see it does a little better. Um, unfortunately, not much better. I mean, it's, it's drawn some bars and if you know what a histogram should look like, it looks like it's believable. There are gaps between bars, which there shouldn't be on histogram. And this scale is weird. The whole point of a histogram is that it should be continuous data and this should be a scale, not just a bunch of bins. And that's what they call these sort of regions. This is looking like a bar chart that's forced to become a histogram. And it's a bit unhelpful. So Excel is better than it used to be at drawing these things, but it's not very good. So I'm going to delete that. And what I'd like to do is show you how to get this data into a package where you can more easily draw accurate statistical diagrams like histograms and box plots. And that program is Jojibra. Before I show you what to do with Jojibra, we need to get that data into Jojibra, and that's what the rest of this video is going to show you, and you'll be glad to know it's quite easy. First thing, I need to select the data. Uh, I'm going to take all six columns at once, and we'll deal with them one at a time in the new package. I could just drag across the columns like I just did. Another way to select data quickly, uh, this might be a useful shortcut. If you, hold that, if you use arrow keys, you just move around, as you may expect. If you hold down shift while moving arrow keys, you can see you select stuff as you move around. Um, if you hold down shift and control while using arrow keys, it jumps to ends of sections. That's just left and right. And if I press down as well, you can see it's jumped to the bottom of everything. One thing to watch out for is if, if there are any gaps in the data, it probably will jump to the gap and not to the very end. So you have to just check you've got everything you want. But otherwise, that's a very useful tip for selecting a lot of data in a block quickly. And I'm going to copy that data. Control C, you could use the right click copy. But that, that is now in the computer's memory, the clipboard. Um, and that can still be transferred to a different program, which is where I'm going to go now. So I'm going to load up a GeoGebra window. And when you load GeoGebra for the first time, it'll look a bit like this. Um, which looks a little daunting. It's not altogether obvious how to get data into here. Um, when you do load out for the first time, you'll probably be presented with a little menu over here. Um, and the spreadsheet thing is looking 
promising there. We might be able to use that. If you click on it, it gives you a spreadsheet. And I'm going to talk more about that. But to be honest, I think it's actually unhelpful to click on that little spreadsheet view. The default view is useful, and you can always turn the spreadsheet on by clicking on View and Spreadsheet. And it doesn't get rid of these other windows, which are going to be useful later on. For now, though, let's just make the spreadsheet a bit bigger. And this is a fully functioning spreadsheet that almost does uh, just as much as Excel, and in some cases does stuff better. And the easy thing is that now that data is in the clipboard from Excel, I can just paste it into here and do that with a standard shortcut, Control V, and there it is. Um, what's good is also the, the titles have come with it, so I can just have a look at the uh, titles still being there. So that's the data in GeoGebra. In the next videos, we're going to be looking at how to use GeoGebra's tools to analyze this in a little bit more of a mathematical way than Excel was able to do.